Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy day. Uh, church board members, you are requested to attend a special board meeting at the tent out there. And we will start the little talk that I'd have, I had prepared for us today. And one of my favorite texts comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, which talks about the story of the prodigal son. And I think a lot of the people, when they talk about the prodigal son, it talks about people who've abused grace. It feels like it's unmerited favor that was given upon a person who did not deserve it. If I am going to be very honest, I am I'm a re recipient of unmerited favor, of grace. And I'm absolutely excited to see uh, those gentlemen in the green sweaters. Can you just, Bush, can you stand up and wave? I'm biased because I went. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I remember as a young man uh, at the Alliance High School, the first time I came to New Life for the homecoming, I thought it was a homecoming, but I remember there was a Holy Communion service, and it was my first Holy Communion in a big church, and when the deacons were giving out the bread, I remember I took it, but I did not know you're not supposed to eat it immediately. So I took the thing, and I, I was getting sweaty, and I was getting really excited. You know how the services in church take long? So, hey, I saw it was five minutes, and I was like, Liwalo na liwe. I just dipped it in my mouth, and I was maintaining eye contact with a deaconess who just laughed at me because we were supposed to eat it much, much later. So it's, uh, I have very fond memories of this church. Today, we will speak about a few of the mental health issues that we go through as teenagers. I say this because a lot of the times we usually talk about the usual. We talk about peer pressure. We talk about our parents being afraid that we are going to start doing drugs. Uh, our parents being afraid that we'll start uh, watching um, adult films or, uh, you know, media which has nudity or violence. And I was speaking to a few elders about a month ago, and I realized that it's so cute, the mentality they have of this generation. They believe that we do not watch horror movies, that they see very scary things even in the news and they think that the kids have not seen it. So I will take a slightly different angle where I'll just offer you guys a, propos a proposal. Hi, Choksarians. How are you? Yani, my, one of my biggest crushes was in Chok, so I'm really happy to see you on my right side. So I hope that this message is going to resonate with Boucherians, Choksarians. I see, what's this called before I get it wrong? Is this Hot Springs? Ah, I was pretty sure it was Hot Springs. And Starcharians over there, I'm really happy to be with you guys. So, as a young person, I used to be, I wish somebody told me this when I joined high school. I wish somebody told me that it's totally okay for you to come from wherever background you come from. Because I was one of those guys who joined Bush with uniforms for Kushikanisha. You know, your parents, ideally, when you get that calling letter, your parents are told, go and buy your uniform from this particular store, yes? But now, it, maybe it was Shah Outfitters or whatever it was. But me and my folks, they were not able. And it, I, not, I don't blame them. I, I now understand, in hindsight, that uniforms are very expensive. So they shikanisha the uniform. So I already started at like negative zero because my esteem was already under. And there were so many opportunities that I missed out on because, you know, being an extrovert, I don't know how many of you have been labeled kierere or sijui mischievous. I see you laughing. Don't worry. <laughs> if you're one of those people like me, I always consistently wanted to prove myself to the world that I was worth something. I also did not want the tag of being called poor or broke. So what I did was to ensure anything that would enable me to be identified with that tag, I missed out on. So there were very many opportunities for sponsorship. I did not go for it because I thought sponsorships were for poor people. It is not a bad thing to be poor. You don't choose the family to which you're born into because when we get into our various high schools, it's the first time our parents are not breathing down our necks. So we are starting to form our identities, and that can be a real, real struggle. For me, how that manifested is, I, since I was already smart, I decided to venture into the things which I was not allowed to venture into. I played music. I went for every function. I remember I went for the first funky. As a guy who's come from Nakuru, who's never spoken a foreign language, I went for a function for German, and I went as a Beatle. So they would say a particular line, and then I'd have to run across the stage as a as a beetle. 
And so I went for Funkies and I did the whole thing. And it was absolutely lovely. But I feel like somewhere around Form 2, Form 3, that's where now I started losing it properly because you start battling with identity. You start asking yourselves the important questions that are never answered to you directly. You start asking, does God exist? If God exists, why is this happening? And what are you told? Just believe. Do not question. Yes? And I feel like a lot of the times, as young people, when we are given these answers, these generic answers that we just cast everything onto faith, and faith is not a bad thing, but there are questions which, if we have diligent study of the word, we can find access to answers to. And that coupled with questions, and as a young man, I just started seeing, you know, I just started getting a bit famous, so I wanted to hit on girls and be uh, the center of attention. I feel like that's not a bad thing, but the way it happened to me, I was not doing it out of a point of curiosity, I was doing it to prove a point. What I would tell you is relax, God is in control. You see that girl who I was madly in love with in, in my high school life, and I thought I was going to get married to her. Guess what happened? Uh, we didn't get married. I'm the only one who's not married. How she got married? Um, but a lot of the times, despite how annoying you might think your parents are, your parents are going to be right about so many things. I promise you. I know it sounds like um, uh, this is a paid promotion. This is a paid partnership with parents. But I promise you, your parents were right about... You remember there's a time you've called home and you know your mom gets paid on maybe 20-something, 20 24th. You've called her on 25th and she's telling you she does not have money and you do not understand how this makes sense. Anybody who's now living on their own knows that you can have more month at the end of your money and it is a normal thing. You can be paid today and tomorrow you have no money. When you're in high school, I need you to take it easy. I really wish somebody told me this. Go there, have a social experience. Learn how to live with people, learn how to interact with them, learn how to form in, in, in the Christian context godly relationships. And this includes you plugging into sports. It includes you being curious about learning about business. It includes you learning about the sciences. A lot of the times when we are told to take the name of Jesus with us, we think it's just you going and staying in the SDA club and that's that and that's it. We are supposed to be excellent in all the spheres of influence in which we find ourselves in. If I were to offer you a few propositions, I would say, beyond what we have as our health guide in the church, that being New Start, which stands for nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, exercise, air, rest, and trust in divine power, I would tell you that you need to set goals that are meaningful to you and that align with your values. Because guess what? Everybody, I don't know about you guys, but when we were growing up, all of us were going to be neurosurgeons. All of us, because we read Ben Carson, and we knew all of us were going to be doctors. Usichagwe kwa sungumu ndio ushtue watu wa kijiji, utafika campus, yo kwa sikushtue. I promise you. I wish somebody told me this. I would have gone into campus and done a course that I actually enjoyed, a course that I didn't do just to save face. Because this life is so short for you to be doing boring things. And I know this might not sit well. I know your parent wants you to be a doctor, but if you feel you're not cut out for it, have an honest discussion because what you're going through right now and then we'll release you into a society where we do not have guides for you, that's how now you think alcoholism is bad, it's, you're going to see it in campus and it's not going to be a shocker. So set goals that align with your values. So sit down, have a meeting with yourself. kiasi. Say, this is what I want to do. This is, and, and seek counsel from your parents. Again, I'm saying if you have the privilege of having parents, lean in on them. Practice self-compassion. I cannot say this enough times. A lot of you beat yourselves up for failing in that exam, for not getting a concept, but I promise you, nobody here currently, they will just tell you, we used to be number one. They can't help you in your current academics. You will learn this for four years, and then you'll go into the arts like me, and then you'll never have to use more concept, sometimes integers. Like, a lot of the stuff that you thought you needed to learn will have to, like, you'll adjust and get new forms of knowledge. You have to keep a growth mindset. I know you have 
goals, you have dreams, but it has to happen incrementally, I would suggest. Whatever it is you're trying to do, are you like trying to learn an instrument? Are you trying to be good at a sport or in a skill? Invest two minutes in it every day. Don't start with this thing where you want to acquire your whole term in a prep. Take two minutes and say, if I want to get better at chemistry, I will take two minutes and ensure I will open this book and open a topic. Once two minutes are over, do that. Like, keep on going incrementally for two months, and then you'll find that you're okay. But if you're in Form 4 and you feel like you're strapped for time, I will tell you, do the things that you're very good at. Choose and say, these are the subjects I'm going to pass and work really hard at them, but also focus on being a great communicator, be good with people, because eventually it's not your grade that gets you far, but your people skills. Like I said earlier, you need to build positive relationships amongst each other. A lot of what makes me famous right now, people would think I am known, but it's because I formed very deep friendships in high school. Right now, the people I call on to, the people who market my music, the people who uh, talk about my craft and my art, the people who supported me are people who I met in high school. So when you're here at lunch hour, please, patrons, allow these people to talk to each other. Uh, Stacherians, please talk to the Choxerians, to the Boucherians, to the girls from Hot Springs, to the Mangarians, to the Mahilians I see over here. And all of you just form these relationships because they will carry you through your adult life. Learn to manage your time effectively. It's very ironic because right now I'm being given the time signal. It means I'm not being an effective manager of time. But one of the indicators that you're going to be successful is one, you have time at your disposal and you know what to do with your time. So focus on that, uh, on building yourself, but also do the things that feed your soul. Practice mindfulness. Have a few moments in your day where you're calm, where you speak to your creator, you share a few kind words between a friend, you do things that just let you relax. Because you guys live such stressful lives, we have expectations for you, we're telling you you need to look this way, you need to eat this way, practice mindfulness. Finally, I need you to remember that you are not alone. I wish I knew this earlier, that right now you can walk up to any adult and ask them any question, and that question which you think is embarrassing is not going to cast anything on your frame. It's not going to paint you badly. Be curious about life. I'd like to propose those things. If, they've, if you try and put those into practice, you're going to end up well. I promise you, regardless of what happens, I know right now you feel like you don't have it figured out, but as one of my favorite preachers likes to say, relax, God is in control. Ellen White said in the book Christian Experience and Teachings, in reviewing our past history, having traveled over every step of advance at our present standing, I can say praise God, as I see God has wrought I'm filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as a leader. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. I hope that this helps you and that you will have a lovely Sabbath and that today you will be curious about the word of God, curious about each other, and ask as many questions as you can. Happy Sabbath. Be blessed. Thank you.